Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am here with this month's Create in Color segment, which I've been doing for over a year now. I'm in year two, very excited to continue with MFT and bringing you these fun videos. I'm going to be using the Friends in the Forest stamp set and doing a little watercolor today on some watercolor paper. I've got my fox and my owl stamp first, masked them out, and added the bear and the deer. And with a micron pen, which is waterproof, you can also use a Sharpie or other waterproof pen, I'm going to add just a hillside. It's going to give me a little ground to work with. And I do find that a little curved hillside just looks cuter than a straight line. But you may want to get out a ruler if you're one of those who likes to have everything perfectly straight. And I'm going to mix up an interesting color that I'm going to be using more for my foxes. I love coloring foxes. This one has some transparent pure orange with a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange and some sepia. And this combination is really cool for a fox. Look how rich and dark it is. Now know that if you use a different amount of those colors and a different amount of water, you're gonna get a different color. I probably can't mix the same amount twice. and this, That's just the way watercolor is. You can't really give somebody a recipe, a, one dollop of this versus one dollop of that, this much water. It's just something that takes practice. So practice a lot and mix up more than the color that you need or else you're going to end up mixing two batches of the same thing. It's easier to mix it once. So if you can kind of start working toward having a guess at how much pigment you need each time you're going to mix a color, it's going to help you in the long run. I wanted to mix a color for the deer that was going to feel a little bit different. So I'm using mostly the quinacridone gold with a little bit of quin. Uh, quin burnt orange and some sepia and I wanted to see how it would paint out first. There are some people that take a piece of paper off to the side and they test all of their different colors. I opted not to do that because I just wanted to keep going and I also didn't want to be mixing up a ton of paint. I didn't want to use it up on a swatch but is as long as you're working wet you can change the color and have it all blend right in which I'm going to show you in just a minute or if you wait till it's completely dry. Don't do it when it's damp in between. You wanna work either wet in wet or completely on dry pigment. So I'm gonna use, while I have this color on my brush, a little bit for the owl's face and a little bit for the bear's snout. And then I decided I was gonna add in a little bit more color onto the deer. He was just feeling too yellow, so I took a little bit of my fox mixture and threw it right on top of the color for the deer. And since it was still wet, it all is gonna blend in. If you use a, a completely different amount of pigment to water ratio, you're going to end up with some bleeds possibly going on. So be careful about doing that. I decided my little bear is going to have a green scarf on him since I already have that reddish color in the fox. So this is going to have a bit of a Christmas flavor even though it's not a Christmas card. There are no Christmas sentiments in this set, so it's one you can use a lot longer than just for Christmas, but you can see how you can easily make it into a holiday card, because I'm gonna have some snow in mine. Use a little bit of that original color that I had mixed for the deer to do the antlers on the top of his head. And then I'm gonna mix up some red for his nose. So that transparent pure orange is a really good basic kind of red even though it says it's orange <laughs> it's a really nice red for the black I use lunar black and one of the reasons that I love painting black bears during the the winter season is because I like a good black bear against the snow there's just something about that that makes it really stand out more plus I was just in Juneau recently and I saw in the Mendenhall Glacier Visitor Center I met a bear. Well, you could say I met a bear. He was behind glass and he was stuffed, but he was a big black bear and he had a big brown snout. And I took all kinds of pictures of him at different angles because I wanted to draw him. And so I got some really good pictures of a realistic looking bear. And that's what I like to color is black bears with brown snouts. So stay tuned for more of those. All right, to do the the background color. I waited till everything was dry because I didn't want anything to bleed. And if you're nervous about backgrounds, you might want to paint your background first because then if you screw that up, you can always redo everything else. 
And if you're stamping with a misty, make yourself a couple of something so you can paint it a few times and not have to stress out about making the first one perfect. Starting with the snow area and moving upward, and I've turned the paper upside down because it's a lot easier to control and get that, that edge out at the outside edge because I wanted a real soft kind of watery dry brush looking sky up there. It's easier to do when I'm working with the heel of my brush facing me. So I've got my paper upside down. And I'm watching that middle area that I pointed to just a second ago because I want to make sure I don't end up with a bloom in there. There are the ways to recover from that, but if you do it while it's wet, like I'm doing right now, put more color in there and smooth that area out. You want to do it before it gets all dry and you cement that, that little bloom in there because that's going to be a problem for you. And I'm using a baby wipe to kind of dab off some of those edges anywhere you want a really soft edge. A baby wipe works well. Don't rub at it. Don't push at it because you could end up peeling up the paper, but you can dab at it quite nicely and make sure you do it with a nice clean baby wipe and you can get a, a good soft blend if you'd like. So I'm trying to loosen up some of those edges up there at the top and then I'm going to start working on the other portion. Unfortunately, now I have to go mix up more of that blue and I'm hoping I get the same blue, the same mixture. That's always a challenge. I'm gonna paint around all these little bits and things. I'm using that little ridge in my palette to wipe off the water. When you get water in a brush, it sits in the barrel of the brush in, that, in the body of it, and then the pigment is on the tip. So I like to kind of brush hard against that little ridge in my palette. It squishes the water out, pushes it out into the paint, and then mixes it up so I have one mix throughout my whole brush rather than having some water that's gonna come out and surprise me. Since the first layer is kind of dry, as I squish my brush over top of the dry pigment now, I'm getting a dry brush edge across the surface of the watercolor paper. So I get this sort of cloudy look at the very top, which is what I was going for. So fortunately, this one worked out the way I hoped it would, which doesn't always happen, as you might know as a crafter. To make some shadows underneath of them, know that when you're looking at the side of an animal, you're looking a side view, the shadows are pretty long and horizontal and kind of pointy at the edges. If you look out at something out your window and you're looking horizontally, you'll notice that. If you see a car, look at the shape of the shadow underneath of it because that's the shadow you're going to get under these kind of animals. I decided my owl was going to be a white owl. I, I thought about that at first, but I decided to wait until I saw the background and see if that was going to work. Since he has color around him, it's real easy to make him be a nice white owl. And I'm using a jelly roll pen to add snow. I recently was talking over on my video channel about using a Sharpie white pen, which is a watercolor pen um, by the Sharpie company. And that doesn't work as well on watercolor paper because it's got watercolor as a base in it. These pens, the, the Jelly Roll pen and the Uniball Signo pens that I like, they have acrylic type of paint in them instead of having more of a, a water-based paint. So they work better on watercolor paper. I got the finished edge using the Stax dies from last month's release and absolutely love them and nested it right back into the piece that I die cut it out of. So I have this really nice flat surface, very elegant on a card. Thank you so much for joining me this month. I will see you again next month. In the meantime, go out and make something beautiful.